Hi everybody and welcome to our second week of Art at Home. This is Mrs. Bojack and you are in the Bojack studio and it looks like a grocery store today because today the artist that we're studying is Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was an American artist who invented something called pop art. The reason they called it pop art is because it was popular. He chose to paint objects in real life that you'd find at the grocery store. So as you can see behind me, you're going to see boxes of Tide detergent and maybe a box of, of cereal. And so for this project, you're going to need to look through your cupboards and you're going to have to find at least one object, one's all you need, that you want to draw today. Now I do want to point your attention to the one behind me that shows toothpaste. Because if you are thinking, oh, I want to try something a little bit harder than just one object, you can take a one, draw one object and then cut it out, use it as a pattern, and trace it over and over and over again, like I did in the sample behind me. But for most of us, you only have to do one. And I'll show you one right now that I did. Um, the reason that Andy Warhol liked to choose things that were in everyday life was because everyone could relate to it. And they said, oh, I know what that is. But he turned it into art. He also liked to paint famous people. So every now and then you're gonna see a painting that Andy Warhol did of Marilyn Monroe, who was an actress, or um, even Mick Jagger. And there's even a couple he did of Elvis, Elvis Presley. So he's a popular artist who invented pop art. So let's get to work. First of all, I want to go over some of the shapes that we're going to be needing today. Now, we've learned the three-dimensional shapes, and these are three that you're probably going to have to use today, or at least one of them. The first one is the cylinder, and the cylinder is what Andy Warhol is famous for, which is his Campbell soup can. And that's a cylinder shape. So to draw that, you're going to need to draw an oval at the top, and an oval at the bottom. Those are more like, a, like elliptical shapes because they're kind of skinny ovals. Then what you can do is you can take a ruler or a straight edge and you can add the sides. Now do this in pencil first because this is not see-through so I would not want to see this line right here. The next, the next shape that you might have to use today is a cube and a cube Normally, if it's a nice cube, you can see all the way through it, but for this one, it's opaque, so you can't see through it. And we're going to do the shortcut way, so you can only see the front and the side and the top. And you notice that these three lines here are parallel, which means they're all going in the same direction. They're all diagonal, but they're all going the same direction back. That's what gives you perspective. The next shape is the rectangular prism. And it starts with a rectangle. And again, these lines, that's going to make the top, and this is going to make the right side. Now, you might be able to see the left side instead. So these could be on the opposite side. It's not a big deal. These are both rectangular prisms, cube, cylinder. Now, if you do make a label on any of these, it should follow the shape that you drew. So if it's a cylinder, it's going to be, if you draw a label on it, it's going to be round or curved to follow, to be parallel with this line, with the top curve and the bottom curve of the can. And if you're drawing a label on one of the boxes, the front of it's going to be the way you'd normally see it. But you want to make the sides of it parallel with that line, so it's going to go back a little bit. Now, we're going to put this to the side. Now, if I'm drawing my can of Campbell's soup, I have to start with the shape and I've drawn it lightly in pencil first. Now I'm going to go back over it with Sharpie. And if you don't have a Sharpie marker, a 
I need a straight edge for that. If you don't have a Sharpie marker, you're welcome to use the black Crayola marker. Now, the next part is you got to add the detail. There's a lot of detail on here. Do you have to draw it all? No, but most of it you do. You have to draw the word Campbell's. Now, most of us have had a lesson already in how to draw fonts. We've done our name or initials using a different or a unique font. So you need to make it look as close to this as you can. So draw it in pencil first so you don't mess up. And if it runs off the side, that's fine. It might not say Campbell's. It might just say Campbell. Now, details. Once you have the fonts where you want them, and you notice I ran out of room, so it says can be, which is fine. Now, if the next thing you want to draw are all the details. So if you have a bowl of soup or a glass of orange juice, or if you've got an Oreo cookie or the Quaker Oats man, you have to draw that stuff too. That's the fun part. Now what you're going to notice is that there's some little details, like 80 calories. I could fit 80, but I can't fit calories. I'm just going to put a couple little scratch lines on there. Just a couple lines to let you know there's more wording, even though you can't read it. I did get my chicken on there, and chicken with rice. I'm not going to worry about condensed soup under here, because it's really tiny, but you can do it if you want to. Down here, really small, it says net weight, 10 and a half ounces. I'm just going to go ahead and again put like little scribble marks. So you know there's something there, even though you might not be able to tell exactly what it says. That's okay. Now the top of mine, I can see a little bit of it. So I also want to go ahead and draw that pop tab. Now I get to color it. The coloring should be exact. You want it to look exactly like the real thing. So, for my soup can, I'm going to need, for sure, the color red, and these, the orange and the yellow, maybe a little bit of brown. Now what I notice is that my brown is really dark and it's not going to work very well. So at this point what you can do is you can get out your crayons or colored pencils if you have them. Crayons work just as well. And I'm going to go ahead and get out a brown to color in some of my little pieces of chicken with the brown, in, with the brown colored pencil instead of the brown marker because it's a little bit lighter in color. The other thing I'm going to do with either a crayon or with my colored pencils you could actually even use a regular pencil for this, is I'm going to go ahead and shade in my bowl and blend it. Now, the top of my can is gray. It's a darker gray. Now, the, right, the gray Crayola marker is really dark. It's about this dark. And that's too dark for what I need. So option, you can trace around the outside of it. We learned this skill back in fourth grade. We do our birds. Just outline around the outline, the outside of a smidge. Then take your regular pencil and shade it lightly so it looks like silver gray aluminum. You can smear it with your finger.
and you are finished. Ta-da! Now another thing you might want to do is if you really like this project and you're thinking this is pretty cool, you can do more than one more than one object. And in this one I kind of stacked them on top of each other and made more than one. So I hope you enjoy yourself. See you next week.